Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 26. All of the clips in this video are taken from a series called A Very Old Stuart S50 Steam Plant and here it is quite near completion. But at this stage I'm nowhere near this. In this episode I show the painting of the base plate as well as the black part of the boiler. I found the job of resurrecting this old Bassett Loak steam plant very rewarding because when it was finished it did run quite well. But I'm not there yet, but getting closer all the time. Welcome back my friends to the show that never ends. As shown in the previous episode, first of all I rubbed down the surface of the steel plate and then I used some etching primer. 24 hours later it's time to apply the top coat. The paint I'm using is HMG Satin Black. This is an enamel paint in an aerosol can. It may look like I'm applying too much, but I'm not really. I'm just making sure it's all covered. The problem is now, though, I can't do anything in the outer part of the workshop until the paint dries. So I'll go to the inner part of the workshop and show how I clean up the outer rims of the wheels on my small steam locomotive. Health and safety notice, please keep your fingers away from the moving parts on the steam locomotive at all times. I'm pressing some scotch Brite against the rim of the wheel using a piece of wood. And I'm running the engine on compressed air. As the wheels rotate, they're automatically cleaned by the scotch Brite. First the rear wheel and now the front wheel. This is going a good bit faster because the compressor's pumped up a little bit since the last clip. That's one side completed. All I need to do now is turn the engine round and do the other side. This is not the other side, I didn't bother showing it on camera. Just for a bit of fun, I'm running the engine. You will notice that the engine rocks about quite a lot. There's nothing wrong with it, I mentioned it in a previous video. It just has very soft suspension. And over the years, it's never fallen off the track. Because the suspension is soft, it follows the track very closely. But it does bob up and down a little bit. Rolling roads are really useful things to have. The four wheels on this locomotive are supported by eight ball racers on the rolling road units. As locomotives rely on the wheels on the track and the weight of the train to provide all of the kinetic energy required for smooth running, they don't run quite so smoothly at low speed on a rolling road. Recently my friend Alex Carnes from the USA and myself visited Bancroft Mill to see the Bancroft Mill engine. I was asking what type of lubricating oil they used on the bearings and Tony Nixon, one of the members of staff, gave me a milk bottle full of it. And in this clip I'm filling the oil can that he used for lubricating oil with it. He also told me what it's called and where to get some more. I'll cover that in another episode. This is how I fill the oil can that holds the steam oil. Here it is coming out of the tap, very slowly as usual, and it ends up in the oil can that I use for steam oil. Even though the cans are different sizes, I have some duplicates of these oil cans, so I thought it was a good idea to write on what's in them. The paint is still drying, so I need to find some jobs to do so I can make this episode, and the jobs mustn't make any dust. I'm going to test the gas burner on the bench. I'll put it on a tobacco tin lid so it doesn't burn the bench. When I first saw this burner, I was thinking, well, it's a bit on the small side, but believe me, the amount of heat it puts out is ridiculous, and it has the proper type of ceramic, the type that doesn't cremate. Here are some other parts to be fitted to the steam plant. You've seen the hand pump before, and there's also a PM Research whistle. I don't know where I'm going to put that, and two Stuart Models displacement lubricators. One is new and one is used. This boiler has an external superheater. Later models of this style of boiler were made by Stuart, and the superheater design on the Stuart 500 series is better than this. This boiler uses a length of pipe that goes down underneath the boiler and back up the other side through a hole. And I can't fit it without removing the boiler, so it's time to take off the front plate. Then I'll be able to route the copper pipe underneath the boiler where it's required. It just sits over the flame, and the heat of the flame dries the steam inside the pipe. It's only a single element superheater. But it is a superheater as it passes through the flame directly. Before fitting the boiler back into the casing, there are two things that I need to do. One is to silver solar a pipe union on the end of this pipe sticking out of the top. And the other thing is... Some painting. I need to paint the front of the boiler black as it was originally. And for this I'm using some Humbrol Satin Black, which should dry slightly less glossy than this. I found it surprisingly difficult to get full coverage and had to go over a couple of areas that I'd missed entirely. Anyway, I got there in the end. In this part of the clip you can clearly see that I've missed some bits. 
so I was constantly monitoring this and I got them all in the end. It was particularly difficult painting around the lettering. Too much paint filled the cavities in the lettering, so the B just looked like a blob. But I think I got it right in the end. I was being very careful not to put any black paint onto the rest of the part. And you do need a steady hand for this. As I'm painting down the side, I do notice there are one or two bits that I definitely have missed. So before I finished, I rotated the part several times to get it from all angles. And finally, the black painted part really was painted black. And now I can't do anything else until this paint's dried. What I'm doing at the moment is taking the boiler out of the casing. And I need to silver solder a union on the end of this piece of pipe. The pipe needs to be bent so it faces down. And I'm starting it off with my small pipe bender, but I can't bend it any more than this. I'll bend it the rest of the way after it's been silver soldered. Here's a view after I silver soldered the union cone on the end of the pipe, and as you can see, the nut is in place and it's bent to the correct angle. Because of the high temperature required for the silver soldering process, the copper became annealed and very easy to bend. The satin black paint that I applied to the back head is looking good, and it's time to bolt it in place permanently. As shown in a previous episode, the back head is held to the boiler using six 5BA bolts. Surprisingly, they don't always line up. I had to put the boiler on its side and put a bit of downward pressure on the side panel to hold it in place. Once I did this, it was a very easy job to fit the last couple of bolts. I left all of the bolts slack, but now they're all in place, it's time to tighten them up. Here's the last bolt going into place, and this part of the job is now complete. There's a good reason why I bent the pipe downwards in this position. This clip shows the pipe fitted with a modified T-piece, and now I'm fitting a Stuart Models displacement lubricator to the T-piece. I think it's better to fit the lubricator here, rather than directly to the engine, where it looks massively over scale. It will also be quite easy to fill and drain the lubricator in this position. Now it's time to fasten the metal plate onto the wooden baseboard, and for this I'm using six wood screws, four under the boiler, and another two under the engine. By doing it this way, the wood screws will not be visible when the steam plant is finished. In this part of the job, there's no safety net. If my holes on the baseboard are not in the right position, then it's going to be a problem. I'm fairly optimistic that these bolts are going to fit perfectly into the tapped holes in the baseboard. Obviously, the first mounting lug is not a problem. It's what happens from there on. And as you can see, the good news is the holes in the baseboard are in the correct position. Not bad to say I held the engine down and scratch the position using a scriber. You may be thinking, why use brass bolts? Well, it's to stop rust. As the holes in the dynamo seem to have been drilled out to quite a large size, I'm using some washers, and the 6BA brass bolts will hold it in position. In this clip, I'm checking the alignment with a ruler between the flywheel groove and the groove on the pulley on the generator. That's good, everything lines up. Time to fit the hand pump. Before I do though, I'm winding some masking tape around the screwdriver, which hopefully will stop me marking the barrel of the pump. These are great pumps, I use them all the time, but I have one complaint. The base should be a little bit wider, and that would make it much easier to screw or bolt it down using either a socket or a screwdriver without marking the barrel. The masking tape seems to be doing the trick. The barrel is left perfect and completely unscathed by the process. Also, as I fit the pump in place, I'm tipping it to one side slightly to start with, which means that the screwdriver with its masking tape doesn't actually touch the pump barrel until you come to the part where you finally tighten up the bolts into the base. And that's it. The last of the four bolts is tightened in place. There is some marking on the pump body, but that's from the lever. You can't do anything about that. In this clip, the boiler is sat on the baseboard in its final position, but not bolted down, because I need to lift it off to fit a suitable mounting for the gas burner. That's about it for this episode. I think it's time for me to continue cleaning up my workshop, getting ready for the move. In the next episode, I'll be piping up the plant and making a gas burner support, and also repairing the gas burner before I do that. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.